Welcome back to Bumblebee. I'm your host, Kyle McWaters. Now, I'm very aware that in history, there's always two sides to every story. Sometimes there's heroes, sometimes there's villains who try and write it like they're the hero. Let's have a look, shall we? Here's the top 10 bloodiest battles from history that made heroes. Number 10, Marathon. The Battle of Marathon took place in 490 BC during the first Persian invasion of Greece. It was fought between the citizens of Athens and Plateau together as one force to defend against the Persian army commanded by Datis and Artis Firnus. The battle was the culmination of the first attempt by Persia under King Darius I to subjugate Greece. The Greek army, the underdog in this, inflicted an embarrassing defeat on the many, many more Persians, marking a turning point in the Greco-Persian Wars. Roughly 25,000 Persians against 10,000 Greeks. I'm on Team Greece because they're clearly the underdog here, and the victors. Also safe to say Greece's confidence skyrocketed after this victory. King Darius the Great and his army fled with their tails between their legs. This battle was a response to Athens and Greeks being done underneath Persian rule. Yeah, they're like, you know what? We're out, okay, dude, we're done. So Darius the Great took great vengeance upon the Athenians, which didn't really work out so well for him. Number nine, Thermopylae. Cut to part two of the same series. The Battle of Thermopylae. This was fought 10 years later in 480 BC between the Persian Empire again, this time under Xerxes I, and now Sparta under Leonidas I. Yeah, they were still pissed and wanted some more hands, so they came back. Basically, Greece's Navy SEALs decided to jump in this time. And the Greco-Persian Wars continued. Only lasted about three days, actually. Yeah, those Spartans, they're good. We're familiar with this tale as old as time. 300 Spartans held off like 300,000 Persians. Yeah, little more this time. They were definitely not bluff. But neither was the 900 Spartans and rebels. There was one path in, which was Thermopylae, and the Spartans did not let them by. You shall not pass. And they didn't. If you haven't seen 300, watch it. It's an amazing movie. Number eight. The Third Servile War. No, not the Civil War, the Servile War. Oh. AKA the Gladiator War. I'm Spartacus. No, I'm Spartacus. Okay, yeah, we get the reference, but who really was this guy? Well, he was a Thracian gladiator who, along with four others, was the escaped slave leaders in the Third Servile War, a major slave uprising against the Roman Republic. The third, actually. Yeah, people were pissed at slave labor. They were done. At first there was about 70 men, then that grew to an aggressive 120,000 escaped, trained, pissed off gladiator slaves. Yeah, that's absolutely terrifying. The Roman Senate's growing alarm about the continued military successes of this growing army led to Rome's army of eight legions under the leadership of Marcus Licinius Crassus. With help of Pompey, of course, the war ended in 71 BC when, after a long and bitter fight, the Roman legions absolutely crushed them. Yeah, sorry Spartacus. He's a hero though. This rebellion is just one example of oppressed people fighting for their freedom against the oppressors. The Third Servile War was the last of the Servile Wars, and Rome would not see another slave uprising of this type again, as the impact had changed Rome forever. Number seven, the Battle of Hydespus. This battle was fought between Alexander the Great and King Porus in 326 BC. These guys scrapped hard. The fourth and the last battle in the conquest of Asia for Alex, yeah, this one took a toll on him. It took place on the banks of the Hydespus River in India, subcontinent modern day Pakistan. The battle resulted in a Greek victory after the surrender of Porus. Scraping by, it seems. Yeah, after conquering the Persian Empire, Alexander got cocky and thought he could just waltz into northern India without a fight. The forces were pretty even, too. Alexander had more cavalry, but Porus had his secret weapons as well. 200 war elephants. That's the most badass thing I've ever heard. Imagine seeing a giant walking tank with tusks just chucking bodies and horses out into the sky. There's literally nothing more intimidating. No wonder Alexander barely won. When asked by Alexander how he wished to be treated, Porus said, as a king would treat another king. Impressed, Alex, now king, allowed him to retain some of Porus's land. He renamed two cities, however, one called Nicaea, Greek for victory, and one after his horse. Yeah. Talk about salt in the wound, dude. Number six, Cannae. The Battle of Cannae was a key move in the Second Punic War between the Roman Republic and Carthage, fought on August 2nd, 216 BC, near the ancient village of Cannae. The Carthaginians and their allies, led by our hero Hannibal, not Hannibal Lecter, just Hannibal, 
one name. Well, he surrounded and practically annihilated the superior Roman and Italian army. It's known as one of the greatest tactical feats in military history. Equally one of the most embarrassing by the Romans. I mean, the Romans were good. Literally a walking tank with shields and spears. They were practically unbeatable. But they rushed into Cannae and Hannibal flanked the shit out of them. Yeah, him and a stew of about 50,000 rebel towns and cities trapping the Roman army inside the city who were then annihilated. Only about 15,000 Romans. Not a huge loss, but back at home, they were starting to panic, and the Romans started doing anything and everything they could to rebuild an army. It's forever known as a legendary and almost defined feat. Number 5. Hastings The Battle of Hastings was fought on October 14, 1066 between the Norman French army of William Duke of Normandy and the English army under the Anglo-Saxon king Harold Godswinson. It took place approximately northwest of Hastings, which is present day Sussex. A decisive yet Norman victory. The English army was almost all infantry and had few archers, whereas the French were an even half and half. The Normans did this really funny tactic where they'd pretend to flee in panic and then turn around and flank their pursuers. It worked every time. Most of the blame for the defeat lies in the structure of the battle. William was a more experienced military leader. He liked structure. Basically, when Harold heard that William had landed in England, he rushed south instead of taking his time to build a strong and large army. The English played offense way too much and got broken to bits. Harold's death led to the retreat and defeat of the English army. William was crowned as king on Christmas Day, 1066. Number 4. Bannockburn King of the Scots, Robert the Bruce versus King Edward II of England. June 23rd, 1314. The first war of Scottish independence. The infamous battle between Scotland and England was one of the most important battles of the Middle Ages. The end of a bloody war for independence. Long story short, Scots were like, yeah, we're, we're gonna stay here and just continue to roll our R's. The gruesome wooden wars were caused by the English invading Scotland in 1296. Basically, he was like, bow and say I'm king or good night. Well, a young warrior, William Wallace, guardian of King of Scotland himself, didn't really like that idea too much and instead decided to hold off the English forces and was knighted a hero of Scotland. Although the bloody battle wasn't the end end, it was definitely the most significant. Unfortunately, like every hero back then, he was also someone's villain. William was captured, hanged, drawn, and quartered. The battles between Scotland and England ended in 1328, 14 years later with Robert the Bruce securing Scotland's independence and adding like 34 more dialects to the UK. FREEDOM! Number 3. Agincourt The Battle of Agincourt was an English victory in the Hundred Years' War. It took place October 25th, 1415 in northern France. The unexpected English victory against the numerically superior French army boosted English morale and prestige while simultaneously crippling France. King Henry V of England led his troops into battle against King Charles VI of France, although he wasn't actually there because he was a little cuckoo at the time. Yeah, couldn't really be trusted on the field. Lots of knights and swords and stuff, you know, that's all I gotta say. This battle is notorious for archers. They won this war, hands down. The Battle of Agincourt is one of England's most celebrated victories to date. It's a history in itself, as it forms the backdrop to William Shakespeare's play, Henry V. Number two, Orleans. And again, cut to part two of the same Hundred Years War thing. The Siege of Orleans, aka Battle of Orleans, was fought October 1428 to May 1429. Again, between France and England. Yeah, they hated each other. From 1428 to 1429, it was the French Royal Army's first major military victory to follow their crushing defeat at Agincourt years earlier. A true grudge match. A young woman mounted on a white horse like a Valkyrie riding into Valhalla. 17-year-old Joan of Arc, the medium knight hybrid chosen by God to lead the French to victory. Why aren't there like 38 movies about her? Like really? Under the Treaty of Troyes of 1420, England's Henry V became regent of France. By his treaty, Henry married Catherine, the daughter of the current French King Charles VI, and would then succeed to the French throne, cancelling out the Dauphin of France, also Charles. Oh yeah, the old switcheroo, huh? That chessboard of crowns, I tell you, just everywhere. Months of battles under the divine Joan led France to victory. The Dauphin crowned as King Charles VII of France, the hero, here being Joan, of course, who was later tried as a witch and hanged. The whole hearing God in your head thing kind of freaked people out. And coming in the number one spot 
Gettysburg. A little bit of a time gap, but it's one of the most prolific and bloody battles to ever happen on this planet. The American Civil War, North versus South. The Battle of Gettysburg, 1863, the town of Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. Union versus Confederate. Union Army led by General George Meade and Ulysses S. Grant defeated attacks by Confederate General Robert E. Lee's army, halting Lee's invasion to the north and retreat back down south. Yeah, just to throw some numbers at you here, about 650,000 Americans died due to this war. It's pretty disgusting. But necessary, as the North was reprimanding the South, ridding it and standing up against its archaic and dehumanization ideologies. The two armies collided at Gettysburg 1863 as Lee and Meade took turns firing cannon after cannon at each other. Lee led his army on a torturous retreat back to Virginia after the loss, resulting between 45,000 and 60,000 soldiers from both armies perishing in just three days. The most costly in US history from battles. Safe to say Grant and Meade were the heroes, and Lee, well, definitely the villain. On November 19th, President Lincoln used the dedication ceremony for the Gettysburg National Cemetery to honor the fallen Union soldiers who gave their life fighting tirelessly for the freedoms of every American. Well, there you have it, folks. 10 times in history that people were beyond cruel to each other, but with that, sometimes comes a hero or two, and a ton of villains. History's dark, but sometimes you gotta stand up for what's right, you know? If you wanna hear about some more messed up history, I'm Kyle McWaters, be kind to each other, and I'll see you next time on Bumblebee.